Hello and welcome back to XCOM Chimera Squad. My name is Saiken and today we're playing Impossible Iron Man Hardcore Mode, hardest difficulty, one safe game and no retries allowed. It is time to go for our second large contestant. Uh, we want to uh, find our investigation target. Um, after clearing the progeny we're now with the Grey Phoenix. And we were basically just starting, as mentioned in the last uh, video, we're going for a mission for an epic submachine shotgun, um, also combating the unrest uh, here in Highland Square, so we should be really fine. And if we're sending our team there, we're going to look only at a single encounter, so today's mission might be a bit of a shorter one. We got a well-equipped team. Um, Virgin Terminal have their Trank Rounds, Cheer Up uh, is back in action, Blue Blood is currently training, and Shelter is, as always, quote unquote, subbing in. So uh, let's move into the mission. And uh, whilst uh, this is loading, uh, uh, currently the first actual episode has aired, so let me share a couple of thoughts about the initial team. I found it uh, very interesting to uh, to get so many positive replies and thoughtful comments. Uh, so on uh, on this way, thank you for sharing them. Um, I am still considering some of uh, the suggestions that had been made, and for the main team, I think everyone was in agreement that Blue Blood Terminal and and um, and Verge are definitely three extremely strong characters and should kind of make up your A team. There was a uh, the jury was still out on the fourth character though, and there were a couple of good suggestions, uh, specifically Torque uh, the Viper as a quasi tank, and maybe in a different video um, I'll go over the actual compositions of uh, the teams so that we can. Um, talk about the pros and cons, but I would really also like to first of all play through the entire game together with you and then see what was working well and what wasn't. Well, we will have enough time to play around different team comps. Now, onto the breach, we got either uh, last through the sentence will be rooted for one round, oh no, or successful uh, shots on enemies will crit. Well, I guess that's a no brainer. Cheer up goes in first and we are actually sending the typical order. So let's take a look here. Good, we got a Necromancer. Um, Necromancers are pretty nasty enemies. Uh, they can summon and that in itself already is non-fun. They can reanimate so I usually tend to kill them relatively um, hi, the trooper is okay. The python uh, on the other si uh, side, or python on the other side, is something that I focus kind of almost second because it has tongue grab um, for reposition and bind ability. Um, yeah, and the others are okay, so it's pretty close quarter. Got ourselves the Necromancer, and we should really start with him. Damn it, he's soaking a lot of damage. But it's worth it. Uh, so we got one unconscious target. Let's maybe go for the Python next. And I will fix the frame rate uh, drops right after everyone is in position. Okay, this should have taken care of it. So we got a trooper over here and trooper over there acting next. We overall just have a single encounter, so might as well make use of our uh, team up ability. And I do have an idea what we could do. How about we're pushing terminal up here? I think that's a good first start. Kinetic shield on to cheer up himself. Up. 
And I mean, there are a couple of... Uh, the Cobra, by the way, is also a really nasty target. Uh, might as well want to deal with her. She has really... Oh, well, there's another one, even. If... Uh, poison attacks. The Python, we can deal with it easily. And I think one of the, the options that we do have is... Positioning ourselves over here, right? It's just one open... Uh, spot um, from the legionnaire here, um, from the trooper here, and we can take down the legionnaire. So I think that's a good one. Let me try again. Okay, fair enough. So next up, I would propose that we're giving shelter an option. Shelter, on the other hand is switching positions with there we go the trooper pushing him further down and we now also got a clear shot on the py uh, python good in terms of flashbang this here is a no-brainer Yeah, let's get rid of this trooper. Good, we got a disoriented trooper. He will more or less take a shot. Yeah, still hits critical. Wow, okay. Well, luckily for us, we can medkit our way out of it. And we now got a lot of enemies that are going to act very soon. Mm. I would like this Legionnaire to die. So how about the Cobra takes a shot onto the, the Legionnaire, uh, Legionnaire right here. It's pretty much what I was hoping for. And we're going to execute the trooper. So that's two enemies down in a single turn. Now is the time when we're going to eat some damage because we're still fighting against five enemies. So technically we're outnumbered. Thankfully though, with our armor upgrades, you can see we really got um, additional hit points going uh, for us. And the defensive nature of our team gives us um, a lot of opportunity. Shelter is under uh, fire over here. Thankfully, most of our guys are immune to poison thanks to the medkits. A nice side effect. Um, how could we efficiently make use of our time here? Yeah, well, that would still be in a flanking position. That's somewhat okay. Yeah, I feel he's in an awkward position where he really should probably rather reposition over here into full cover, non-flankable, instead of going anywhere in a, in a crazy position. This here is more effective. All right, so what are we going to do? We are protecting Verge because he's like lit quite literally without cover. Secondly, as we're charging in,
there are options to injure them, but not to uh, necessarily kill them. We could position ourselves here, a very solid cover position, and we could take out the trooper. Could also position ourselves over here. That still would be a flanking position. You know what? I think this here is the better the better call. Thought I had it. We're being poisoned on terminal. She's the only one without a med kit. That's an interesting way of being unconscious. Uh, he's hanging out of the window. Wow. All right, so we got to deal with these guys. Yep, that's a nice little stun. And this here will set up for a future knockout. One thing that we could do is I want to make sure that um, the terminal is in safety. So we're putting her into full cover and we can deal with the Cobra. Uh, that's our shotgun, by the way. Terminal gets the kinetic shield. And we're softening up the Cobra. We are definitely healing ourselves. And let's get down and let's down the Cobra. Only one more enemy left. Thankfully, only hits um, kinetic shields, and that, by the way, just makes um, chair up so much stronger. This here is a flanking position. We don't need to do anything else. So, we can just down the trooper. Massive shootout, and at the end. We were victorious. Trying to get another captive here. There we go. Yeah, no one is gravely wounded. That means no real wounds and we got five captured enemies so that is exactly 20 intel something that i haven't necessarily done super well in a couple of the missions i could have been more diligent in making sure that we always get the plus 20 intel i think we missed it twice overall and we're in mission 17 so i think it's the the ratio is still okay but there is always room to improve so that's one of the mistakes Forty credits, twenty intel, and we got a new weapon. Plus, look at that, guys! Three promotions. Hell yeah! Promoting Verge, and there are two um, options. And coincidentally, I was even being asked in the, the um, in the comments of our very first video 
um, whether I would go for the extra slam damage or the network healing. So here's the deal, you do have an option. Number one, Verge shields for one hit point each uh, for each enemy in the neural network at the end of uh, the turn. Um, mind you, unconscious enemies still con are considered to be in his neural network, so he continues to receive healing from, uh, from uh, this point onward. I personally figured, given that he can put two enemies into his neural network every round, um, if he's being fed an additional action from terminal, it's even three enemies per round. That means he has a regeneration, kind of at round number two, if you want, uh, of three every single round. And it accumulates, it really adds up. Not only that, with our other buff, uh, he has plus 15 aim and plus 30 critical chance. So uh, he's, he's going to be a monster and the normal uh, neural network has another plus 10 aim. So let's say you have three enemies in your neural network. Um, not only would you overall have um, plus 45 aim, so with his current aim he would not miss at all, he doesn't need a scope or anything, can just focus on different uh, abilities. He would also have uh, plus 30 crit and he would regenerate 3 hit points every round. Mind you, he can also then lash out and deal 9 points of damage with a single action and put even more enemies in his neural network. So. You can you, you now start to understand why this character starts to very 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 much scale in the end uh, in in the end game, and I've seen a couple of um, a couple of uh, initial guides which I think are very much premature. So writing a guide when the game is out for two days, I don't know. That's it. It's bongos uh, to me. You're just passing on first impressions at best. Um, but I guess uh, that's a different story. So in some of the guides I've seen him uh, being ranked as a low tier um, uh, yeah, operative. And I just firmly disagree with that assessment. So we're going for network healing. He has an enormous sustainability by himself. And once everyone is in his neural network, although he cannot no longer use stupor, but he can still use his mind flay and his uh, normal shots. So that is great. I can see an argument uh, that these two together are also quite um, nice because if everyone just drops down, they continue being in your neural network and then you continue being healed. But you can also take trank rounds like we're doing it and get the same effect. Cool, so that was a great promotion. We got uh, share up here. Sherop gets another promotion and it's either recharge using the charge bash to render an enemy unconscious, uh, refills one charge, uh, which isn't bad because he continues to uh, do AOE attacks. Um, and the other one is resonance fields allies with uh, kinetic shield gain 15 aim. Now, hmm, that's a difficult one because the last time I picked Resonance Field, uh, simply because I felt, you know what, it's an extra buff and it is nice. But let's really think it through. So we do have uh, Verge and Blue Blood. Um, Verge is almost maxed uh, when people are in his um, in his neural network, and Blue Blood um, will get scopes and will hit pretty well. Does the 15 aim really matter? You could make an argument that with it, you can even hit into full cover and don't need to worry about anything. I get it. I mean, that's not a bad argument. On the other hand, what does recharge give us? Recharge um, would mean that he could uh, continue dealing AOE damage every round, um, even if he would be focusing on something else, um, but it requires you to down an enemy first. So. If it would say whenever you bash, you automatically gain one uh, charge back, that would probably make the ability even a bit better because you continue to have charges and so on. Um, given that all of the charges deplete after bash and this here requires you to actually down an enemy, I think I'm still slightly in the camp of the resonance field, to be honest, and I would keep it as such for now. Passive buff, um, pretty helpful. We got a promotion here, 
Uh, interestingly enough, Shelter is also level four because he's always tagging along, never training. Um, and he either got solace, <coughs> Shelter surrounded by an aura that immediately extinguishes or blocks any mental impairments <coughs> for themselves or any nearby allies. So that's the classical uh, solace ability from the psionic, uh, from the uh, psychic um, uh, characters in XCOM 2, which isn't bad, um, specifically if you fight against psionic uh, characters. Uh, the other one is Soulstorm. Upgrade Soulstorm to heal Shelter for half of the damage dealt. So that would be two healing every single time. Difficult decision. Uh, the last time I went with a Solace Aura and I felt it was okay, it was good, um, but for, for whatever reason it just never, I was just never in a situation where the Aura was actually really providing a benefit. You always had the option to either use a flashbang um, if something happened um, or you're just killing the psionic characters uh, right away anyways. Um, it does not make you immune to um, to the codex ability of Psybomb, it's just um, mental effects. So that is reduced to what? Fear? Um, you very seldomly get feared. Uh, that is um, very seldomly happening. It uh, could be the lift ability. Okay, fair enough. I think it wouldn't um, uh, prevent stasis from happening because that's not a mental effect. So it's really fear and 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 stunned. Hmm. You know. I think we're going with Soulstorm. Uh, this time, A, because I want to test the ability, and B, he will be in a team where there is no healer. And having self-sustained capabilities for characters where there is no healer um, isn't the worst idea. I at least want to test it. I'm not saying it's the better ability, but uh, keep in mind we're still testing some of the abilities, right? Good. Uh, we're almost done with the training. Uh, we got a lot of our characters on level 4 at the moment. Uh, so once the training is done, I'm expecting us to at some point become level 5, which is great. Um, let's take a look uh, what we're going to do next. We got a crime scene here for 75. That's actually helpful because we can upgrade our weapons finally. Um, we could get some more intel. Okay, fair enough, yeah. Or we could contact the scavenger market. And I know probably by now you guys will be crazy um, and would be saying, hey, Saiken, why aren't you contacting the scavenger market before it? Hear me out. Here's the logic behind it. I last time contacted the scavenger market uh, way earlier in the run. Um, this time I want to focus on investing the intel mainly into building up the city and see how much that snowballs. I think the strategy um, might work out. It will give you way, way more snowballing as you go further down into the game. But it requires you to kind of not take scavenger loot right away. We have one advanced scope uh, at the beginning that completely helped us. So we're currently okay. Uh, we're missing out on superior um, weapon modifications, but that's okay. We're doing fine. Um, and the unique weapons, so the um, uh, relics or the epic weapons, uh, we can get them through missions. So we don't need the scavenger market and can instead pump the intel into, into something else. I would like to go with the crime scene, which is probably what we're going to do next. And just to use our just to use our ability on cooldown. Yeah, we know that this here is going to grow even further. So might as well just take off two. And can we upgrade this? No. That would be great because we would get 15 Elerium if we're doing it on top, but that's fine. So let's take let's take the credits and run. Cool. We got enhanced shotguns, and we got a couple of other items. So 
Our Spec Op mission has given us um, additional credits and we are now ready to um, take even more training. Blue Blood is uh, fully trained, Verge is fully trained, uh, Shirop is fully trained, so the only one not being fully trained is Terminal and we'll give her an additional utility slot right away meaning she will be assigned over here whilst our team uh, continues to move um, as a unit three more rounds um, we can we can continue to do our uh, normal missions i think another leg work mission for now is fine We need more intel. We wanted to build up the city, so that's okay. We got the shotguns down. So next I want to go for expert field teams to really get level 3 teams. And then we can run for teams and um, run our covered ops missions for teams. And just upgrade everything to rank number 3, which is going to be great. Another option... Um, could be improved med kits, but that will be uh, relevant a bit later. I also like uh, the breach tactical equipment med patch. Once we're switching to team number two, they need healing in between the encounters. Yeah, the Mastercraft weapons, we could, thanks to our like diligent focus on Elarium, we could already go for Mastercraft armor if we want. And, you know, maybe... Maybe that's not a bad idea. You know what? Let's do. Let's really think about uh, that because we are so uh, st stacked on Elarium. But expert uh, field teams should come first because uh, level three teams are awesome. We got new supply items, the shotguns, um, which are great. But before we do that, I would actually like to upgrade the SMGs first. Leaving only a hundred left over, uh, so we will probably not be able to do anything else. Um, the enchanted uh, sword rifles would be next. Yeah, we're, we're we still need money. <clears throat> What's the reward? So we got some intel over here. And a hair trigger. Okay. We got even better rewards here. An epic pistol. Holy shit. All right. We're going to do that. Not even a question, my friend. An epic pistol is exactly what we were looking for. Uh, unfortunately, we can't upgrade. But yeah, that's going to be our next mission. Given that we get an epic pistol... Yeah, we still have two little credits, but I want to farm until um, we'll eventually upgrade the weapons. There is one last uh, thing that we should do, though, is as we're moving on, let's check the loadouts real quick. Um, she's currently in training, which means she does not need any of uh, these items. Advanced scope, expanded magazine. Uh, we'll give him the mag weave. Trank rounds definitely make sense, and a flashbang grenade also makes sense. Um, in the meantime, since he's the only one who has a submachine gun, we can give him the new uh, reward from our last mission the surely constant uh, submachine gun. So it gains, uh, grants the Hail of Bullets ability, which, if I'm not mistaken, was a sure hit, uh, ignoring any cover. And that's not bad. I think that's a that's pretty uh, decent uh, item. We got a med kit on... Since we're fighting so many Vipers, I'm even thinking about giving everyone a med kit. So he has a med kit. He's missing a med kit. Good. So what we're going to do is, although I know we didn't want to spend too many credits, I actually buy one more med kit 
for the immunity against poison. It's super effective and, and as with any XCOM title it seems the medkits are getting stronger and stronger. So let's put that here. Uh, Trink rounds also on him, that's fine. We can Trank rounds, med kit, Trank rounds, med kit, med kit flash. Oh no no no! I made a mistake. I'm sorry. So we're taking med kit, Trank rounds on him, and he'll take the flashback grenade. Okay, perfect, good. That looks like a decent team. And I think we're going to do fine. Uh, now that we don't have a healer for med kits, makes sense anyways. That's the end of today's uh, mission. A lot of organization and a bit of uh, thought process around how we're structuring the team. I'm still very happy with how the team played out. Um, it's time for us to get an epic pistol. And I know exactly the guy who's going to look uh, for that epic pistol. Um, who's going to be very, very happy. All right. Thanks for watching. Um, take care. We see each other in the next run. And don't forget to leave a like or a comment down below. Thank you.